Hello and welcome to ML with AP. The topic for today is gradient descent. Let's learn. We are going to learn gradient descent by using first principle. We'll first check out the intuition behind gradient descent. Then we are going to take a look at the maths which makes gradient descent work. And at the very end, we are going to code gradient descent right from the scratch using Python and without using the standard Python packages. Our use case will be to solve linear regression using gradient descent. Without further ado, let's jump right in. But what is gradient descent? If I have to summarize that in one sentence, it is a very common optimization algorithm which we use in machine learning and deep learning. Okay, uh, what it is used for? So if you have some background in machine learning or deep learning, we have something called cost or loss or objective function. Gradient descent is the most common way in which we optimize those objective or loss functions or minimize those objective or loss functions. Okay. But what is optimization and why do we need it? Let's understand that. Optimization refers to the task of minimizing or maximizing a function. Let's break it down like this. Suppose you are running your own firm or your own company. Your goal or objective is to maximize your profit, right? Now profit is dependent on how much revenue you are getting in. Profit is also dependent on how much expenses you have. Expenses could be on advertising, expenses could be employee cost, expenses could be raw material also. So there are a lot of input variables or features which go into a function which is profit. Now if you have to optimize or if you have to maximize that profit, you are, what you are going to do? you are going to optimize this function which is profit and profit is dependent on expenses, revenue, employee cost, raw material cost and various other factors. So friends, I hope you understand that when we say optimization, we are talking about minimizing or maximizing a function and the function will have different variables. In machine learning and deep learning technology or terminology, then we typically represent our cost, loss, or objective function as JW, okay? And which is, and what is it dependent on? The profit was dependent on your raw material employee cost revenue. Here, our cost or loss function is dependent on models parameter. So we are trying to optimize those model parameters. We are trying to tweak those model parameters in such a way that we are we are able to minimize our loss minimize our loss function that's what optimization is so what is the goal of the optimization algorithm it is one of these two if the function is a truly convex function by truly convex i mean this is a nice ball shaped function and over here on the y axis is my cost or loss on the x axis is my parameter of the model think it like this in, in our uh, earlier analogy, my y-axis will be my profit. My x-axis will be like employee cost or, or one of the costs, right? If it is a nice ball shape function, there has to be one and only one global minima, right? So the, the goal of the uh, optimization would be to find that global minima. But, but in case of non-convex function, which is irregular, there is no, it's not a ball shape, it has it is going down and again it is coming back up. In that case, there will there are chances that there will be various local minima also. Like this point is a local minima. It's a minima, but it's a local minima. And there is only one global minima over here. The goal of the objective function would be to find at least the local minima. If it is not able to find global minima, that's fine, but at least local minima. Convex functions are much more easier and nicer to optimize. Our linear regression, which we are going to deal, our logistic regression, they are convex forms. But our deep learning models, they are usually non-convex or they will have multiple local minima also. Okay, so that is the goal of the optimization. Now, what are the type of optimization algorithms which are available? Now, the first one is very simple, which is closed form, and it is non-iterative. If you have studied uh, high school algebra, you may have seen that Sometime what we do is we solve the quadratic equation and we get the value. We do the first differentiation or the first differential and then we, we try to minimize, we try to equate that to zero and solve that equation and we call that. Is that those are the closed close form uh, uh, and non-iterative way of optimization algorithms. A convex function 
a true convex function will have a closed form solution. That means without using a num numerical analysis or iterative way of finding the minima, you can actually play with the equation itself and find it. So how we to do that? You, you take the first differential or you take the first derivative, equate that to zero, solve for it. That is a closed form non-iterative way. Now, there is a, if the, there is another example or the another type of optimization algorithm will be the iterative with convergence. So like in the past example we were seeing, there is a nice ball shape function. And if you put an optimization algorithm over here, which will try to get to this global minima, that will be the case that we are using an iterative way, not a closed form way, non-iterative way. We are using an iterative optimization algorithm, but it will converge because it's a convex optimization problem. Now there could be cases as in the case of over here, it's a non-convex function. So the other type of optimization algorithm is the iterative with convergence, non-convex optimization, okay? Now our uh, gradient descent is the iterative uh, type of optimization algorithm, right? So it will fall, it can solve the number two and number three also. Now back to gradient descent. Now what is gradient descent? We already know it's a common optimization algorithm which we use in machine learning and deep learning. It's a first order optimization algorithm. What do you mean by first order? That means we are only using the first derivative. We are only differentiating the function one time, right? The first differential. And we are calculating the parameter based on that. Let's jump into our Python notebook and maybe we can, we can start from there after that. Okay, so this is our Python notebook. Most of the things we have already discussed it. Now let's see. We are, we are talking about the gradient descent. Now take for example, the, what, we were sh what I was showing you over here is the two dimensional. So this is our loss or cost function and x axis is my parameter, one parameter. But what if we have two parameters and they are represented by theta zero and theta one. So there we have got two model parameters. To give you the analogy, this could be the employee cost, this could be the raw material cost and this is our profit, right? So in case of machine learning, the y-axis over here becomes our loss function, which we have to minimize. This will be theta zero and theta one are two model parameters, which we are trying to tweak so that our loss can be minimized. We are trying to find the value of theta zero, theta one, which will give me the minimum value for j theta zero, theta one. And we are represented it like that because j is dependent on theta zero and theta one. Okay, so this particular contour if which you are seeing over here you can easily see that in three dimensional this is a non-convex type of so we'll have local minima also over here and probably this is a global minima over here right so in three dimension it will look like that in three dimensional when we apply a gradient descent that means it will and since it's a non-convex there are chances that will land up into a local minima also over here, right? So it all depends on where we are initializing. Think it like a hill. If somebody is walking downhill and initialized over here, or the person started from here, he may as well land up over here rather than to the global minima over here, right? Okay, but uh, in case of a three dimension or two model parameters, if it's a true convex form, it will have this nice ball shape form. Right? and there will be only one global mina. So irrespective of where you are starting from, you are going, you are assured to land it at the global minima position. I hope friends, this is clear. Now this particular figure you may see in some books or literature, this is, this is called contours, and contours are nothing but it's the same thing. Let's see, you, you are getting it a top view, top view from here of this ball, then the various elevations or the various levels of y-axis height are represented by various concentric circles. So this, the outermost circle will be some circle over here and then the further circle and the further inside another concentric circles and they are just representing the top view of this particular bowl shape function, okay? And it, it may be slightly irregular also. So, this is another way of representing this three-dimensional figure into a two-dimensional using contour. We use that in geography also, if you have done the high school geography. And over here also, if you see how the gradient descent would work, is that at some point it will get initialized, then it will move further down and it will try to find the global minima over here. 
and since these contours are are concentric without touching each other we can say that this is a true convex function okay friends the way gradient descent works is suppose this particular ball is there and this is my initialization point and what my 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 ultimate goal is to reach to the bottom of this the pit of this right what i will do is i'll create i'll calculate the gradient or the slope at that point and i'll move in the opposite direction of the slope the slope is positive upward i'll move in the small i'll take a small step towards it over here again i will come to the next step and then i will again calculate the gradient and the gradient is still positive i'll move in the other side again further down okay again i will calculate the gradient at the third point i'll see that the slope is still positive right i'll go further down in the negative direction of the slope i'll go further down and till the till till the point where my changes or i will keep calculating the loss the loss becomes very very minimal or marginal at that point i will say that oh okay i am reaching i have almost reached the bottom of the pit right and we'll we'll see it we'll see it in a more graphical way little down the line let's understand as i was saying that we we are trying to deal uh, our gradient descent in a uh, with the use case of a linear regression let's see uh, what we are let's see graphically and intuitively what we are trying to do so linear regression all of us know that what we are we are trying to do a best fit line and these are my data points or observations right over here what i'm trying to do i'm trying to predict the best fit line over here and how i'm going to predict the best fit line i'm trying to reduce the prediction this is the <clears throat> this is the prediction point this is the observed point i'm trying to reduce all these errors all these dotted things to a very minimum okay when i am able to reduce that to the very minimum i can sufficiently say that okay this is the perfect best fit line okay of my prediction i cannot get better than that with a straight line this is what linear regression is now in linear regression we always define a mean square error right mean square error this is my error and then what i am trying to do my y y i hat is the predicted value so these points right where the dotted line is meeting the line is the y i hat and i am subtracting it from y so i am calculating this distance okay this distance over here and i'm squaring it and then i'm averaging it out okay so this is that's why it is called mean square error so this is a square error and i am calculating it a mean of it right so the mean square error this is typically the loss for a linear regression setting okay clear so if you have not watched my linear regression videos please i request you to go ahead and watch if you are if you are still not comfortable with linear regression okay now what will be the let's say my in case of a straight line i have defined my hypothesis function or my predicted straight line as theta 0 plus theta 1 x now theta 1 is the slope over here theta 0 is my intercept so the intercept where the y axis meets the line is the intercept that is theta 0 theta 1 is my slope okay this is my hypothesis or my i am trying to say that this is my predicted line this is my best fit line proposed best fit line okay now what will be the cost function or the loss function the loss function again over here will be nothing but my mean square error why because theta 0 theta 1 x is h theta xi and i am summing it or i am i am taking the subtraction of the predicted versus of predicted minus observed i am squaring it mean square error and then i am taking the average of it so mean square error. the by 2 i am putting it just because it makes the math easy when i will take the differential this 2 will actually cancel that out so that's why i am putting it doesn't matter because think it like this the function i am trying to minimize the function i am trying to get the value of theta 0 theta 1 whether i am adding a constant in front of it, it it should not matter because ultimately the that function will give me the same theta 0 theta 1 value or it will get minimized at the same value irrespective of a scalar which is getting added okay now here is the math part now what i am trying to do as i said that gradient descent is a first order optimization problem so i am taking the first derivative now don't don't be bothered about these signs this is called del it only says that this is a partial derivative you'll see sometime a small d that is derivative 
this is called del and it is partial derivative that means we have two variables over here that's why we are taking a partial derivative with respect to one variable j is 0 and 1 it could be 0 and 1 in this particular case now when i'm taking a partial derivative what is happening over here now you can if you are aware about the calculus chain rules and all then i'm taking the partial derivative of this particular function over here okay this is my loss function msc what will happen this 2 will jump right in front then this particular function will come like this and how the how the derivative works is that this thing and then again i am taking the partial derivative of the function so this is nothing but if it is x squared then the derivative with respect to x will be 2x right this is the same thing which i am writing okay and and then i am doing the partial derivative of this particular bottom part okay now let's let's try to understand one more time and this is just to refresh your calculus let's say this particular thing is x and it is x squared and i'm differentiating with respect to x x squared with when we differentiate with respect to x will be 2x right so the numerator the the exponential exponentiation will come in right in the front half is already there that's why i put half so that i will cancel it out my when it is a function over here I, that function comes as it is with the chain rule and with this thing over here again i have to differentiate right the the base of it so h theta x minus y now h theta x minus y del del theta j and if you have to expand particular this particular thing right and now why am i expanding this particular thing now friends over here m what is m over here m is nothing by my observations what is n over here n is a more generalized expressions so my n is the number of thetas which i have right so theta i so 1 to n this is my n the number of features which i have okay now if i have to do a del del theta j over here then you can appreciate that all the values with respect to theta j will be a constant right only the theta j portion when i reach it j that time it is a variable with respect to theta j this is basic uh, calculus right all the other of this summation if you expand this summation everything else will be a constant one component where it will be theta j x j that will be the variable with respect to theta j okay and hence when i expand this and differentiate it with theta j all i am going to get is this theta j x j i will get x j because theta j x j differential with theta j has to be x j right and hence del theta j j theta will be equal to h theta x minus y x j i hope friends this is clear okay now what is our gradient descent says in in mathematical form what it says is this alpha is a learning parameter or a step size like how big or small a step we should take over here is determined by alpha and it's a hyper parameter which will be, which everyone has to set we have to set we have to tune and we have to set now let's say this is this is the crux of gradient descent what it is saying is in case of two parameter problem right theta 0 and theta 1 theta 0 is my intercept theta 1 is my slope okay now again coming back over here for theta for theta 1 this equation is perfectly valid what will happen for theta 0 now if you put this equation theta 0 plus theta 1 x over here theta 0 plus theta 1 x over here right then only the first part because there is no x i part with theta 0 attached to it right the only the first part s theta x minus y will be the differential of j theta with respect to theta 0 okay because that is the intercept part there is no xi attached to that okay now when we do that then what our gradient descent algorithm says that hey what you do is this is my let's say the first uh, iteration this is my initialization point theta 0 and theta 1 some point this is my step size this is my gradient of the gradient at that point okay and this is again the gradient with respect to theta 1 and what I am going to do, I am checking the gradient 
at that particular point and I'm taking a small side in the opposite direction of the gradient and that up, that how scaled down that a small step is, is with this learning rate parameter alpha. So alpha is typically set like 0.01 and 0.001 depending on the context. But this is scaling down your step, okay? And, how, and, and this is the whole thing is gradient as is evident over here. This is the gradient, right? And it's saying that wherever you initialize, take a small step in the opposite side of the gradient and then again evaluate your problem, right? So repeat until convergence means until we reach to the minimum point. How we are going to identify that we have reached to the minimum point? We are going to identify which that unless the, my loss function stop changing, if the, my loss function is stop changing, let's see, if I keep coming, keep coming, and my loss function is stop changing over here, right, or stop, then what will I say? Oh, I have reached the bottom of the pit now, and I should probably stop, okay? So this is what it means. So this is the match behind, in a, in a, in a very short form, this is the match behind the gradient descent. And we are talking about a problem which is, we, because we are trying to fit a straight line, so we are only interested in two parameters, intercept and the slope, right? Theta zero and theta one, okay? Friends, I hope this is clear. Let's go ahead and code it using a Python package, okay? Uh, no, sorry, without the Python package, <laughs> let's code it with, uh, uh, with right from the scratch, okay? And our use case, as I was saying, is the op we have to optimize our linear regression equation. So what I did is I, imported my pandas and numpy libraries, and these are just used to generate the data and do some mathematical operation, that's it. We are not going to use this to implement or, or make use of gradient descent. Here I am trying to generate some random numbers, okay, some X and Y generated data. If you can see over here, that's why I'm using numpy for. Now I'm getting the shape of X. Now what is my X? Let's get the shape of X. So my X shape is 100. So I have 100 observations over here on the X side or the features which I have, okay? So I have one feature and 100 observations, okay? Now, for my Y over here, if you see, I have generated the Y over here and the Y also is the 100, okay? So now I have nice set of a column data, X and Y. Y is my feature, Y, X is my feature, Y is my predicted value, okay? Now I have to code this uh, gradient descent. How we'll do that is very simple. We'll set a learning rate. This is nothing but alpha. I'm setting it as a hyperparameter. Currently I'm not doing hyperparameter tuning. That's a separate exercise in itself. I'm setting it to 0 0.01, let's say. Epochs are how many times you are iterating over the complete data or complete this 100 set of observation. That is called epoch, okay? So one epoch is if you iterate over the entire data one time, that is epoch. I'm initializing, I'm initializing my theta zero intercept and my uh, slope as zero zero over here, okay? These are some of the uh, uh, empty list which are defining, which I'm uh, to store the data, okay? Now let's see, what I'm doing over here, friends, is that I'm defining the number of epochs that I want to iterate over 100 times, okay? And I'm assuming that to make the matter simplify I'm assuming that in 100 iterations, I should be able to converge, okay? I should be able to converge. So I'm not especially finding a tolerance limit that, okay, if the, if the change between two successive iterations of my loss is very, very low, then you stop. I'm saying that, okay, I will iterate 100 times, no problem, it's a small data set. And what I'm doing is, I'm trying to find the gradient. Now, what is my gradient? I have already established or initialized theta one and theta zero over here. My gradient is nothing but, if you see over here, theta one x plus theta zero minus y. So my for my intercept, what was the value? For my intercept, my gradient was, would be just sum of theta h theta x i minus y i. This part was my gradient, right? So if you see over here, this is the same thing I'm doing. I'm nothing doing anything else. I'm calculating the gradient. Similarly for intercept, intercept will be multiplied by an X item also, my input variable, okay? And then I'm doing a sum, this is my, and then I'm dividing it by M because this is how it is, right? This portion without alpha, 
1 by m this portion i am calculating this particular and again for theta 1 this portion without alpha minus alpha i am calculating this portion okay so those theta 1 and theta 0 and theta 1 are calculated what i will do after that again my learning rate is already defined according to this formula what i have to do my initialized value minus alpha into gradient right theta 1 minus alpha into gradient same thing i am doing theta 0 minus learning rate into theta 0 gradient theta 1 gradient again minus why minus because we have to go into the opposite direction of the slope why we have to go into the opposite direction? because we are minimizing the problem we have to go to the bottom of the pit right here I am storing interim value just for uh, doing the graphs later, okay? But or MSC, what will be my mean square error for linear regression? Mean square error is the my uh, performance measure. What I will do is once this this theta zero and theta one has come after first iteration, what I am doing? I am taking that value and I am calculating a mean square error. See mean square error y hat minus y divided by m the whole square right that's all i'm doing okay and then i'm just printing that what is my msc what is my theta zero theta one after every epoch okay that's all i'm doing let's run this thing okay when i run this thing friends if you can see for the zeroth epoch or zero iteration my msc was 5.31 my theta zero and theta one on intercept and the slopes were this value if you see after let's say my 25th iteration it has it is it is somehow stopped changing like or it is changing very little bit msc if you see my 0.42.38 you go further down when we reach 40th iteration it has stopped changing very little so that means it around 30th iteration or epoch it has started converging right so if you see the value of theta 0 or theta 1 are also not changing that much 0 0.28, 0 0.84, 0 0.84, 0 0.28, 0 0.28, 0 0.24. Anyway, nonetheless, this iteration, this epoch, we ran it for 100 iterations. And finally, what was my MSC? My MSC was 0 0.25 and my theta 0, theta 1 are 0 0.29 and 0 0.87. Okay, a very simplified view of gradient descent, right? And this is the batch gradient descent. I'm calculating the gradient with all the data points at every point, right? For every epoch. Now let me, let me, I will not go through this matplotlib code because this video will become very huge, but just suffice to say, what I'm trying to do over here is I'm trying to do an animation of the different points and how my line is shifting with respect to various epochs, okay? So the first epoch, where was the line? Second epoch, where was the line? Third epoch, what the predict? Because at every epoch I'm predicting, theta zero and theta one. So where are those, where is the line moving? How is the line moving is, is something which I'm trying to do. Let me run this and see the visualization. So friends, you see, let me run it one more time and, and then show it to you. You pay little attention. So you, you can see that the, how the line is moving upwards and trying to do the best fit line because why it is happening? The first line was my initialization, right? Theta zero, theta one. After that, it keeps moving, keeps moving and keep converging, right? So if you see, see it has started converging and I'm running 100 epochs, that means 100 times this line is changing. And finally, this particular, it is still running over here. I think that after the 100th iteration, yeah, it has, I think it has finished. So this, this will be my best fit line over here, right? It has converged finally, okay? So this is how um, gradient descent work. Okay, this is the, uh, again, over here, my loss function I have put with the epoch or iterations. So my, how my loss, my loss was what? MSC, how my MSC is getting down with the number of epochs. If you see this elbow region over here, around 20 or maybe 25 or something, there is no further decrease in loss, which is happening, right? All those other epochs were unnecessary to certain extent. I should not have run that. It started converging around this time. Initially, when I did the initialization at zero, zero, right? After that, it has started, my loss has started going sharply down. But over here, it has kind of stabilized, right? So this is, this is the loss versus epoch. 
Now, sklearn or scikit-learn is a very popular library, again, through which you do the linear regression and behind the scene it uses the uh, gradient descent to optimize this. I ran the same data just to revalidate that what we have, we have coded is actually making sense. Okay, so when I did this, our MSC is 0.25, our theta 0 and theta 1 are 0.88 and 0.2288, right? Very similar to what we have got over there. So, yeah, with that being said, I think we have come to the end of this tutorial. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please do consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. It will mean a lot to me. And I'll see you all in the next video. Till then, thank you. Bye.